of actions for various circumstances in life. I call them fire drills. That's what I call them with my kids. We would sit down, like Tracy said, um, communicate. Communication was key because that was the other thing that he said to me. You always said something positive to us. You always told us who we are. You always said, we're strong black African American men and we can do it. Jolo Puerto Rico. But see, you think your kids not listening. They paying attention to everything you saying and you doing. Yes, They're modeling Lord. you. So have life drills with your kids. And then the pinky finger, mercy over judgment. My youngest son taught me a great lesson. And this is when I was able to reflect on what the apostle said about grace parenting. I didn't realize I had been doing it. But my youngest son told me he was about 13 years old. Have mercy on me. God is not through with me. <laughs> but he told me about two weeks ago, I was, I was just trying to play on your emotions because I knew if I could just call in on Jesus, you, you would let up on me. You would let up on me. Because you was beating me every day. I said, but I had to beat you, you, because every child was different. But I had to beat you every day before I let somebody kill you or destroy you or the jail system beat you yeah, that part. And because I used to tell my sons at the time, ain't nobody gonna do no more to you than I'm gonna do. Ain't nobody gonna hurt you but me. Okay? So with that being said, let us be in balance in all things. Yeah. Balance is good. But let us not fail to chastise and correct our children in the Amen. home. Because we are not going to lose them to the streets. Amen. Amen. Wow, wow, wow. Let's give our panel of ministers their great gifting. Give them a great hand. Come on, I'll perform your lips and your praise. Wow, that was very, very enriching. Now we're open for um, dialogue and questions or comments, whatever. You may have gotten a revelation. You may have a testimony. You may have a word of praise. Whatever you want to share. We have open mic at this time. Okay, and I'll do a little bit of walking. I need some exercise. Mm -hmm. All right, who wants to uh, say something first? Because you know I'll, I'll be led of the Spirit to, to come to you too. <laughs> Friend, while someone has um, decided to come, I'm giving you a chance. Um, in reading um, uh, Reverend Kimball's uh, thinking on uh, Grace Parenting, uh, we all of us shared about um, the things that we saw, but he, understand that when he began to put this grace parenting in in place, he was one that was married, and they were married several years. I think he said eight or ten years, and had had a kid. Wow. And then it was in their later years that they were ready to adopt, and she ended up having a child and then they were ready to adopt the second time and ended up and they had no idea what uh, raising children were about and and his wife had the brainstorm say we really don't know what we're doing I wonder where we can go and find out how you're supposed to really be raising children because Tracy mentioned it there there are really two distinct ways of raising children. You can raise them with the fear tactic, or you can raise them with what they call the performance tactic, giving them everything they wanna, letting them have their way with stuff. There are two ways, and they saw that neither one of these ways really fit the mold of what they wanted to see in their children. So that is where they really began to seek the Lord Amen. about what it was in raising children. And I just want to share with you, he, they used the premise in building a house. Wow. How there needs to be a foundation. And they talked about three things. 
What do you want to see in your children? You want to see them secure? You want to see them uh, to feel themselves as significant? And you want them to be strong? And then he talked about you want them to have love, you want them to value and have purpose, and all of these things you got to have in order to know how to give it to them through the Word of God. Yes, because the culture gives it to you different. Yes, it does. That comes through Nike sneakers. Wow. That comes through getting your nails done, all your hair done. And if you don't have that, then you aren't with it. Then you aren't purposed. But that isn't what the Word of God says. So we have got to go back and really begin to reestablish some of these foundations. And don't get me wrong, you have to discipline. Oh, no, you don't have to beat them down. Not with the extension cord and the pad matters that we got whipping with <laughs> and leaving all the welts on their bodies the way I did from time to time. <laughs> but there, there's a way in which you discipline children. Sometimes I, when all Mama had to do was look at us. Oh, yes, Lord. And you straighten up and then. And I've seen children when they mom looked at them and say, That's me. <laughs> like, what you looking at? I remember the time that we had relatives and, and I was the show off. And I just showed my butt. And all of a sudden, Mama said, Stanker, come here. And she took me back there and she took my skin and she. Around. And I remember they could hear the people in the back. They say, "Where's your little daughter?" She said, "She, she and I want to say from the back, don't worry about where I am, because you won't see me anymore, because there were expectations. We let our children sit in our conversations. We let them hear everything that we talk about." We've got to establish boundaries. There has to be an understanding, expectations yes. that line up, not with what we want, but what God said about it. Yes. Amen. Oh Amen. That was funny. You know what's interesting? Some things we do um, that are innate. I remember not knowing the significance of it, but I remember when Summer started um, elementary school, and I would have her look in the mirror and say, um, uh, I awake this morning respecting God, myself, and others. I'm a winner, I'm special, and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And today, I will, I will make great choices, right? And so she would just say that every morning. And then when Sonny was born four years later, he uh, kind of just followed suit and as they got older it they you know they would say it sometimes and and um a few years ago god said bring those affirmations back they simple but they have such significance uh to them i gave you to that and to this day um when they in the morning you can hear them saying, it might be sleepy, whatever, but they are still speaking. I wait this morning respecting God myself. I don't get high sound as long as you as long as you say it. And even with the uh discipline, um she is right there, you know, she can still give a look and I'm like, she might come over here, you know, type <laughs> deal. Like she's still pretty strong. I might have to I love her with my good arm. But, but even with my children, I had a key, I had a um a key phrase and I will say it now, even at 17 and 13. I tell them, I used to say, do I need to put on my cape? Because that means I have turned into a superhero and I am going to pick up or fly over or do whatever I need to. And if you ask Summer and Sonny, what's the, and they would straighten up, because I'll say, do I need to put on my cape? 
and they just be like, nah, she don't. So those are little things that you don't, you just do even if it's for joking, but they still have power where you may not have to, you know, jack them up. It's just something that you, because sometimes you don't even know what you're going to do once you get them, but 